Hello, welcome to another landscape painting demonstration. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy. And the painting I'm bringing you today is called Ocean Beach. It's 12 by 24. I completed this yesterday. Pretty large one for me, and hopefully uh, I'm getting out of the way most of the time. Now, this uh, drawing portion you're seeing right now was started over a year ago. And it's on a gray. What I had in mind was to do the whole thing in blues, but uh, I decided to back off on that and went back to my original reference image um, and uh, and basically did it in live color. Uh, you maybe noticed I said painting demonstration, landscape painting demonstration, not toneless landscape painting demonstration. I don't feel like this work is especially toneless. Um, but probably the sky could be considered to be somewhat but uh, when we start getting into real uh, pretty aquas and things like that, it's hard to uh, it's hard to uh, reconcile that with tonalism. Um, so the uh, original uh, in the members area is a six hour long video. Uh, I think there's some good instructive stuff in there. You'd have to keep it open in a tab and maybe work your way through it. But uh, this has been sped up about. 25 times faster than I painted it originally um, but it's all in there I think there might be a little bit of sand uh, the sand area that I didn't get but um, quite a few painting sessions here over like four or five days and um, like I say it's the kind of scene that does that does so well out here and uh, seeing as the, um, the global um, situation has really affected tourism here uh, this is the sort of scene that sells to the locals, so I'm kind of putting my focus more on that right now, and you know, it's all good because as long as I'm painting, I'm pretty happy. You know, I was just working on a uh, painting a day with a student where I was showing her how to paint trees, and or how I paint trees, I should say. There's a lot of different ways to paint trees, and uh, you know, it's I've done so many, you know. Um, one thing I find uh, find interesting and a bit challenging about these beach scenes is uh, I haven't painted the ocean a lot, so I, I enjoy figuring out different ways. In this painting, I, I come up with a strategy. Uh, basically, I'm using like phthalo blue, which I like for oceans because it has greenish tendencies in it, which can be very easily brought out with a little bit of cat yellow. Um, if you do want to see all the color mixing sessions and things like that, um, I'd show all my color mixing, uh, my, my initial color mixing in the members area, along with you have access to my reference image there. You can see what I was looking at. Um, really, reference images can be a double-edged sword, though, because especially it's taken me years to reconcile um, how to avoid all the traps inherent in photography and even here I'm working a bit to not get overly detailed because of the larger size um, I think it did a pretty good job I um, the last thing you'll see me do at the end of the painting is the white of the waves and I was going with uh, actually using lead white which we will maybe talk about a little when we get to that portion of the video and some of its properties and why I chose it um, but that's one of the um, the reasons that I'm not really calling this a, a toneless piece because I went with the white almost pretty much out of the tube um, in my estimation the it needed it for the I, I almost see the waves as being the focal point of the painting um, I really enjoyed painting the foreground. I enjoyed painting most of this, to be honest. The The challenges were like areas like the sand because there was all these different um, colors in the sand from where the water had come in and then retreated. And I decided to kind of play um, clay, reddish clay tones off of blue-gray. And of course, I have this gray underpainting. and. Um, the reason for the gray underpainting was I was going to paint this initially as all blues, um, but I backed off on that because uh, I just uh, changed my mind, and it's one of the reasons I, you know, the earliest part of this uh, video is from a year ago. I basically sat on this thinking the drawing was good, and I had, I knew I wanted to finish it, but um, sometimes, and maybe that's a good tip for you, you know, sometimes you don't always have to. Uh, 
to get in there and make everything happen right away. You can do that under painting and sit on it for quite a while. It's not going to, um, you know, it's not going to rot. It's not going to decay. Uh, it'll be uh, fresh and uh, ready for you um, when you uh, when you can can conceptualize what it is you really want to do with the painting. And sometimes that takes a little bit of time, um, and uh, you want to take the time necessary. Uh, I uh, believe in working in a pretty expedient manner, and that's one of the um, the things I wanted to touch on today's video, maybe to help you out a bit, because I was um, working with a student this morning, and a um, very, very talented person, and uh, likes to work in an expedient and immediate manner, um, as I do, but there are times that you must slow down, and knowing the differences is really a factor that's based on experience more than anything else um, unfortunately uh, or fortunately and how do you get that experience well you get it by doing a lot of paintings and um, that will feed your intuition and will feed um, uh, it will feed uh, what you do with your painting you might go to do something and then you remember uh, oh yeah that doesn't work I know it doesn't work because I tried it a zillion times and it just doesn't work yeah anyway we're gonna have an ad for my book coming up I'm gonna try and read along with it okay this is the ad for my book coming up five four three two one do you want to paint tonally do you want to paint better tired of trying to find the info that you need there are hundreds of videos on this channel you could watch for days and not find the info you need until now. Introducing my new book, Landscape Painting the Tonalist Way by M. Francis McCarthy. Everything you want to know in one place. Order your copy today. Landscape Painting the Tonalist Way. Just click the link below this video or go to my site, landscapepainter.co.nz. It's in my store and there's also a link at the navigation at the top where you can find that video I printed a very small run uh, we sold about half of them I'm um, looking to do another 10 or so before I get a reorder in so there may be a bit of a gap um, we'll see how it goes uh, lots of things uh, to navigate right now uh, in the world of uh, M. Francis McCarthy finances but um, I'm so glad for the support I've received and the thing is like I, I just said if you're you're looking for specific information it the great thing about the video format is you can actually see it happen and so uh, most of us being artists we're visual learners so <clears throat> I always tell people sometimes they complain about the um, uh, my dialogue or the things I say but my point really is to them just watch the video look look what I did that is everything the uh, the things I'm saying over the top is basically just because silence just feels weird you know and it is ability to give you some insights and in teaching um, all of which I basically worked on for the last two years to put into this book so if there's something that you go oh can we never talk about this or that well I probably talked about it maybe 30 40 times you just haven't seen that video so anyway we were talking about working uh, in an expedient manner which I believe in I believe in moving through the whole painting um, there are places you want to slow down uh, edges like where the here in this case where the hills are meeting the sky um, these waves that I'm going to paint in about mm, three or four minutes you'll see it um, at various places and times it's time to slow down and you want to at that time you modify the pressure of your brush uh, you, the amount of pigment that you have in your brush um, the direction and angle of your brush um, and mostly uh, I mentioned this in last week's video you want to have a bit of respect for the work that you've done before don't just go piling over things you've done before uh, willy-nilly in your desire to achieve some um, sort of perfection because first of all perfection uh, I'm not going to say it's not attainable I'm not one of those people but let's say it's not easily attainable and if you do attain it then you're going to really have to get back in the struggle and, and, and do something again the very next uh, day so 
who cares about perfection we want to get the best result we can um, the best way we can and usually that's by moving across the surface getting the paint down and then modifying things a bit but when you modify things have respect for the effort you made initially because what happens otherwise is you just throw everything away um, you know and in the meanwhile your inner critic is going man this is awful I can't paint why am I even bothering etc so on and so forth that's a bad attitude you don't need it you know so um, instead have an attitude like make a mark stop think about it especially say you've got the paint the canvas or, or board basically covered um, and now you're coming in you want to maybe adjust things take a break go away for a little bit come back some things will jump right out at you immediately uh, and just fix those things don't turn into a robot in the early days of this channel you hear me using that analogy all the time you know don't let the robot take over the the robots like this automatic um, quality yeah so hey we're into the waves now and I spent quite a while on the waves they were very important um, very tricky compared to the other things I wanted just the right kind of edge I decided I wanted them really bright and light like I said that's not tonal but it is what I felt was needed for this painting uh, without those waves the sand would have been the brightest thing but to me it's a beach scene so um, I was looking at the reference a bit but I um, was trying to vary it and try not to get into uh, I'm a photorealist sort of category um, but I did end up getting some kind of photo-ish effects for sure uh, mostly because um, well we have the scale like we're not close in on those waves uh, but uh, you know I tried to vary things too mostly I felt a lot of the challenges were like I'd already painted that bit of sand you see me painting right now but I had to go in and make it lighter once I saw what the white of the waves was doing and um, so and here you see me breaking out the brush to try and smooth things out that's something I almost never do and it didn't work here I'll be honest with you what I ended up having to do was some of these darker spots were jumping out I had to go over them with lighter paint also in that water I was real happy with the aqua quality going up into the dark blue at the top but um, I got the idea to maybe bring in a bit more yellowish uh, aqua tones uh, down in the uh, in our lower left hand side of where the water is and I think that worked really well it gave it a lot of depth and kind of a nice rich quality and all in all uh, I'm quite happy with this painting and I hope that uh, well it's, it'll be for sale in my store it's going to be for a good price I don't know exactly what yet but um, I'll probably just take uh, some sort of smaller painting and factor up by dimensions or whatever I don't know exactly what I'm gonna do but yeah, it won't be outrageous and um, <clears throat> it'll be affordable and uh, yeah um, I'm gonna be doing another beach scene coming up I've got quite a few planned out and uh, pretty exciting and I I one of the things I did here and I kind of did it in the last couple is um, I, I pushed some of these sand areas into real clay type reddish tones and I think that worked well especially playing off the blue and it seems to me too much so much of what makes the beach thing work is playing the reddish clay tones off the blue tones the gray blue tones for the sand anyway I can see we're getting pretty close to the end I hope you enjoyed watching me paint this uh, this slice of New Zealand this is uh, a beach not far from where I live called Ocean Beach it's very beautiful really beautiful and you know I'm from California man they have beautiful waves there you only see one or two surfers uh, in Santa Cruz, which is close to where I used to live in California, you'd have surfers having knife fights for waves, you know. Um, and not here. We uh, we got plenty of room. Yeah. Uh, I hope you enjoyed watching me do this. And uh, get, 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 let me a comment if you could. Also, the, there's other ways to support me if you're getting some value from the channel and you have the means and the ability to support me. Uh, you can join the members area. You can go buy a painting. Some, several of you have lately, and I really appreciate that. It's my absolute favorite way to be supported. And I have some really affordable stuff in there, I think. Yeah. Um, all right. There's a thank you button where you can leave me a donation. 
Ah, if you don't have any money at all, please just leave me a comment. Let me know you got something from the video and that you want more like this. Anyway, until I come back with another video for your edification and enjoyment, do me a favor, do me a solid. Take good care of yourself, your family, all your loved ones. Stay out of trouble, and God bless you and your family.